Welcome to the Trinity Force Podcast. Yo, it's that Triforce cast beaming straight to your home. Grab a beer so we know Pony drinking alone. Send an email, a quick tweet, just pick up the phone. Leave a message, hit the beep if you're a creep, watch your tone. Discuss the meta game, patch notes, whatever helps your stats most. Obi Pone Kenobi is your last hope to snatch gold. So grab your headphones and join in the fun. We'll try and force in some jokes and some cringeworthy puns. Yo, we can make it together, people. Trinity Force Podcast. This boy's a second to none. Now that's the end of the intro. It's time we've begun. All right, fuck it. Hey guys, welcome to episode 438 of the Trinity Force Podcast. I am not Adam Ponophobia Cogswell. Serial here taking over for just today. Uh, Adam is doing something. I don't know if yeah, he actually do told us what he was doing. Is he at the Reds game? Uh, yeah, he, oh, he might be. Part, yeah, yeah. He, he might be doing a, a family outing for Who once. Fuck uh, does those things. Come on. People with families, so thankfully a few of us are exempt from that. That sounds morbid. I meant my own like underling family, not my underling okay. family. Your, your minions, <laughs> yeah, small, small, small minion family. Um, so uh, we are still on pre, uh, pre mid season, I guess, uh, as I misspoke We're there. The mid season patch uh, just hit. Yeah, so we have covered pretty much all of it, but with a with a big portion of support that has not been covered, which is the uh, support item changes. Uh, and the new quest system, uh, following in the uh, footsteps of Hearthstone adding quests in their last expansion. Now, uh, League of Legends, one out of the five roles will have their own kind of quest that you can do with the support items. But I think there's a few like small hits we can do first, uh, because there are a couple balance changes that we haven't gotten to. So, uh, quick, easy one, which I think is very cool. Uh, teleport, uh, small change. If teleport is cast off screen, it'll search for a nearby unit to target. And spells can no longer be queued during ch- teleport's channel time. As as a never teleport user, I cannot even begin to explain the impact of these changes. Um, it's it's I interesting, it's... but I I know since one of the old issues was I know you this they fixed this a while back, but you could like spam spells while you were teleporting, and sometimes it would just cancel your TP. That hasn't been an issue for like two seasons, but. I'm trying to think of like who really is impacted. Yeah, I'm by trying this. to figure out if this if this is like the the type of situation that you get with Pantheon, where right. you can like cue a bunch of his abilities mm-hmm. so that he stuns right upon land. Like he 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 touches down and then immediately hops right off the ground and stuns you. Like mouth fight uh, is like the big one I think of that. Like if you TP and you probably are instantly ulting. So I guess that's impactful. I don't know what do we know what the range is on like finding a nearby unit. Um, that's kind of unclear uh, from the notes. But I what I what I compared it to, and I was trying to remember what summoner spell it was was a heal. Yeah. Like a long time ago, they they kind of messed. I shouldn't say that they made the t- prioritizing of uh, where heal goes mm-hmm. a bit better because it would search for the closest one to your cursor, like closest champion, and then if there wasn't like if you weren't anywhere near them, it would go for the closest one in range with the lowest amount of health like it would it would it would become smarter for you so this is kind of i think a smart way of making teleport easier in the off chance that you have to clear like hit it really fast and don't have a lot of time and you're like well now i have to search for a ward and that sucks yeah. so mostly so, like mini map <clears throat> casting right i would think so like that that makes the most sense and i guess i uh, thought it, it already worked that way so i'm surprised that this has been an issue well it shouldn't uh, be an issue anymore yeah hopefully I mean, I guess that's technically the only way that it can be cast off screen. So, yeah, because otherwise your mouse would move with you there. So, overall, not too big of a change, I don't think. Just quality yeah, of life. Quality I life hear a lot, a lot less. Of... I need a ward. Throw a ward for me. Uh, I, I do that a lot. Throw a ward. I'm hitting F. I'm hitting F on the uh, <laughs> on the map. Go. Uh, so other other small change. Enemies knocked out of a dash by displacement effects are now properly locked out of other actions. Example, Flash, for the duration of the displacement. Uh, I I guess that was just a bug fix, because properly locked out makes it sound like sometimes you could flash out of, like, I, I don't know, is this, like, lease in kick, like, being able to go a different direction, like, flash? You can't flash out of the displacement well, it's normally. it's like if you're Tristana, who's hopping, and then you get headbutt by Alistar yeah. mid-hop. It's it's little things like that. So so mm, mm, I would say that. 
Oh, so okay, you can't flash immediately, is what you're saying. You can't you like you can't flash to reposition before you would even land. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from the Alistair head, but from somebody head. else forcibly just displacing you. Yeah. Okay. That that makes sense. Uh oh, I knocked out of a dash. Duh. Yeah. Okay, I was missing like I. Okay. Uh, so a big change, and we are going to go through each and every one of these champions. <laughs> no, yes. we are not. There are 68 champions that are gaining MR per level. Uh, point five MR per level. So coming out to. Uh, eight total? Nine. Nine. Roughly eight, eight and a half. Well, because it's per level is per I level. I think level one levels. counts, though. Yeah. You have base oh, stats, well, and then level one counts. Okay, well, fair enough. 17 and a half, or I'm, I'm so drunk right now, apparently. <laughs> uh, I'm just not talking. It's a bunch of champions. I think, does that make all of them have MR per level yes, in the game? Yes, this fixes everyone that didn't have it at this point, because they covered the tanks a couple patches ago, and they gave it to Shen and a few others. Now it's pretty much hitting... All the eighty carries, some of, some of the junglers. All the eighty carries and mages. Like if yeah. you were not a melee champion, because it, it, it's pretty much all the range. But Yasuo champions didn't have it. Yasuo has it now. He's he was melee. Um, oh yeah. Okay. Trying to um, Rakan gets it now. I'm trying to look at. This. Thank goodness, Zion Rakan. I've been talking about needing MR per level forever. So that's that's yeah. great. Yasuo yeah. needs a lot of love. Oh, Cassidy's the other one. <laughs> Cassidy gets it now too. There's, and okay. if we count Kale as a melee, Kale also counts. But, okay. So that's it for melees, but then every other <laughs> range person. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and most people, up. when they think of melee, they think either like a bruiser, like Garen or Renekton or some shit like that, mm-hmm. or, or Master Yi and Talon, who apparently had it. Yeah, no. Sure. It is weird that there were these few isolated cases of champs that just didn't have any. Right. Like, I understand why Cassidan didn't have it, because his kit's already very anti-mage focused, but... I guess I would it, not be yeah. shocked if this actually like bumped him even. He's he's already better. super strong right he's now. He's already good, <laughs> and, and if this bumped him better, yeah. Like by it's one of those things where you can argue that this makes a big impact, but then you you think about it from the other side, it's like but they're also getting the MR. Mm-hmm. It's not like you know there there are specific matchups. You know the majority of the matchups your opponent's not going to have it. So I I almost feel like bot lane is the most affected by this just because of the number of champions that could be played down there that would also be taking um magic damage without a lot of ability power to back it up yeah that, that's kind of where we might see this most impacting things but i don't think that suddenly makes brand bad or zyra no. unplayable down oh, there you know? i would i would i would say it would it would hurt the uh mid laners that take a lot of uh penetration in their early build uh, because a lot of that starts to get neg- uh, not not negated necessarily, but it's less effective now. Because you're you're ba- you're basing it on I can get to like twenty to twenty five magic pen through runes, uh, boots, and maybe uh, haunting guys, and that is most of their MR for most of the game, and it was for the longest time on these squishy yeah. champions. And now they're getting they're getting like a good percentage of that back, which kind of hurts them. I'm not sure how much, but. It's- I, especially being on the champions you want it to be i don't know I mean, like worst case scenario, when you're talking about this, getting rid of worst case scenario this puts us back to where things were in season six when every support was buying aegis yeah like it shouldn't have that big of a fe- of an effect on the early game yeah and in the later game this is actually what it's responding to is is mm-hmm. aegis's aura being no longer a thing and they're just being like kind of oppressive amounts of magic damage available so yeah so uh, it's it's nice quality of life stuff again, trying rounding everyone out to make sure like, oh, you, just you don't have MR now. Everybody gets it now. Yeah. So uh, moving down to actual champion changes because there are a couple left besides the supports. <laughs> kind of uh, items. Uh, so Renekton has, I guess, the biggest ones, but they seem more quality of life they're, bug, they're fixes. bug fixes. <laughs> Yeah, I do we do we need to cover this? Um, We've been covering bug fixes. There are Renekton important champ, ones, and... I guess. So, uh, so Renekton no longer in, ignores inputs during his abilities. Cast times once an ability has completed, he'll move on to the next queued action. Uh, yeah. So one of the big things with this would be would be like, Q, like oh god, like W Q E, probably <laughs> you can just queue those up now and without having to like frantically mash or get out. They're just nice. They'll just go nice in a row how you want them. Um, well, that's how a lot of champions' abilities work. Renekton was this weird exception where you would press W and then you couldn't get the other stuff to go until the W animation was finished, which is why Ravenous Hydra was such a big deal is because you could cancel that animation for W a lot faster yeah. than well, waiting you also around. Like, 
it makes sense like for him I, I say this word probably too much on this podcast but thematically because all of those abilities require him to be swinging his blade to do something and so you couldn't like whereas like Velkaz can throw out all of his abilities because they're all kind of separate like that one is very specifically like obvious where you have to do he has to complete everything um so keep going various buffs and timers are tracked in the buff bar example remaining time to cast dice are now tracked on their respective ability icons instead mm-hmm. cool I guess that's a usability thing. I feel like some people are going to like that and others are going to hate it. Well, it's 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 making you look at your abilities more as w- uh, instead of having to look at the buff bar, which is kind of a weird like plate. It's not a weird place to look, but having to identify where something is when you might have like 12, like that's a, a really high number, <laughs> but like a lot more buff things and they might not be in the same order as always. This allows you to just look at your... Uh, your E and say, okay. I see oh, I agree. Bar. I'm just saying, like, the, the Renekton players out there might have preferred looking at their buff bar and they might have just, like, I mean, yeah. I don't know. They could just because they're used to it, you know? But doesn't affect uh, most players, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, pass, passive uh, Renekton's first attack on re entering combat now properly grants the full five fury. I guess it wasn't. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. You can tell none of us play Renekton. It's a, it's a lot of little itty bitty bug fixes that could add up because Renekton's already seeing a fair bit of play top lane in some of these like yeah. melee heavy matchups so it's nice uh, Call the Meek is Q uh, Jesus Call the Meek's range now properly scales with all size modifying effects not just Dominus fixed a bug where Call the Meek wasn't hitting invisible units fixed a bug where Renekton could basic attack at the same time as Call the Meek's damage was dealt that, that last one actually I know some of the people on um, like the Renekton main discord they're actually upset about that because that was it was almost like a Riven animation cancel so you would mm-hmm. animation cancel out of your queue to get an auto attack in while it was going so that that also doesn't matter for about 97% of the player base but it's it's little things. Oh, also, it's nice that they're finally fixing the range, considering we now have an item that makes you larger. So, yep. Oh, well, we already had uh, the iron, uh, iron, iron elixir, potion. but now we have more of them. So we have iron and elixir, whimsy. yeah, mm-hmm. or... wild growth. Yeah, thank you. Wild growth. Yeah. Thank you. you play that champion. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't read the tooltips. Like I, I, I rarely ever read the spell names for things. Uh, so E, Slice and Dice fixed a timing issue that can con- inconsistently cause Slice and Dice not- to not hit enemies or Nectin passes so, through. So even cool. if you're upset about the animation canceling yeah. thing, you gotta be happy about this change. Oh yeah, yeah. Having your E not go is just one of the worst. Especially fish. because when that was in Rage, that would shred armor. Yeah, and, and, and like that could be a the big second part. Deal. The second part would, not the first part, yeah, I believe. Or, or even if you just sliced in and it just didn't register and you don't get your dice. <laughs> it's like, oh, whoops. Well, now I'm now I'm just yeah. dead. So yeah, again, nice things, nice things. And then, well, and then not as nice things. Uh, our Dominus no longer de- de- uh, deals an extra tick of damage on cast. Yeah, you lose like twenty damage. Oh no, cool. Yeah. We got- <laughs> so we're gonna call this a mixed bag for Renekton. It's mostly some, good. It's uh, some mostly knife good. ups, yeah. <laughs> some some yeah. bad changes, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, th- these are mostly bug things, uh, and, and as is the next one with Singed, uh, which actually I remember seeing this on Reddit being an issue. Uh, his Q Poison Trail's damage now increases as soon as Singed puts another skill point in it, rather than waiting until he toggles it off and on again. Oh, I'm so glad they changed that. Those types of abilities are so annoying. Yeah, yeah. Because I think another one there's, there's that a... is like that is like a Mumu's W. But I Anivia's think... R. Yeah, Anivia's R is a big one. Like I feel like they should just naturally do that, and Singe not having it was like, but but why? <laughs> I uh, I I think I remember a long time ago testing this, and I I thought that um, if you like cast an ability, let's just say uh, a Mumu's bandage toss, since we we're talking about Mumu, and in the middle of casting it, you leveled it up, like before it hit something, it would do the leveled up mm-hmm. damage. I I think the one time I tried this, and that's that's been a long time, and this just makes sense that Sin should have mm-hmm. this. I don't know why you wouldn't. Like at all, I, I don't know. There's a lot of spaghetti code that you're just like, why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so moving down, graves, graves. Jesus, there's so many just bug little things here. Graves can no longer queue multiple spells during his basic attack animation. This prevents an unintended interaction where graves can remain in attack range after ulting by queuing both collateral damage and quick draw during the same attack animation. Yep, it was the R animation cancel that again ninety. 7% of the player base couldn't pull off anyway, so it does. this doesn't affect Graves. And he got an MR buff this patch, so he's still really good. Yep. 
Um, Volibear, uh, Frenzy, his W's attack, attack speed bonus now increases as soon as he puts another skill point into it rather than waiting until the buff falls off and is reapplied. So it's same kind of idea. It's a bigger is deal for him because uh, he didn't sorry, have any... Sorry, He didn't have any control over that buff showing up. Yep. Or going on cooldown or anything. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, prize uh, E is spell flux. If spell flux's target dies while the projectile is traveling, spell flux will still spread to nearby enemies. That's pretty cool. That's nice. Mm-hmm. That's, that's more nice. quality of life stuff. That's, yeah, because uh, you you would use that to uh to last hit to last hit, and then it would auto spread. And that that was so that was if you didn't kill it at the time. I guess that's like that doesn't really. Hmm, that's that's a a nice buff that doesn't hurt. It doesn't make the pro scene rises better, but it makes the rises that aren't as good way better because if they were going to miss it, like if they didn't time it right, you still get the thing you wanted more, which was spreading the flux, potentially. Yeah. So I like that. Which is kind so, of the change that's <clears throat> needed for for him right now and everything because he really struggles in, in solo queue, but he can be a nightmare in the pro scene. Good change. Yes. Yeah. I'm glad that so, they did a bunch of really small... Like basically well, just quality of life things with, with with respect to the champions in this patch, considering all the items that are getting adjusted, and then the three big tank changes. You know that are that are more or less reworks. Yeah, and I remember, you know, I'm really glad to see a, a light hand was taken with the rest of the the champion pool. I forget who which rioter it was, but I was reading some of the forum posts or even I think Reddit today, and they're just and they talked about yeah, we don't want to change a lot because just doing this shakes up the meta enough. That we might not need to do anything because it was it was in response like, well, why wasn't Ninja Tabby nerfed? Why wasn't Lulu nerfed? Why wasn't Ivern nerfed? They're like, well, let's let's wait and see. We got some things down the line just in case, but maybe it changes. So I'm um, yeah, I'm I'm also happy it's kind of a lighter patch with everything else going on. I mean, it's not really a light patch. There's so well, much like there's so much that okay happened. outside of the three tanks. There's like very minimal champion changes. Oh yeah, it's not yes, like yes, nerfs okay. across the board for twenty champions or something. Yeah, it's instead it's sixty eight buffs, <laughs> 68, champions with some upper level. Buffs. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about our our main topic tonight, which sounds like I'm a, we're on last week tonight. Uh, support items and their new quest lines. So the quick skinny is each each uh, item, each of the three support items uh, now has a little quest attached to it. Where after you have acquired 650 gold with the passive, uh, which has changed a little bit for Ancient Coin at least, um, and you upgrade it to the second rank item, it will complete a quest and give you a bonus for the rest of the game. Um, mostly, I think you get like a one-time bonus of an extra skill point with regards to the Ancient Coin line. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't level you up; it's just an extra skill point. You don't and you don't get to level something up to sixth rank or fourth rank ultimate you just get an you get an early boost to skills or you get a uh regenerating shield on relic shields line or uh you're getting the tribute procs off of your spell thieves line gives you a movement speed buff so uh let's jump into how we get them i suppose because it's a little bit of changes yeah so it's you have to you have to collect 650 gold um through, through the ancient coin light in particular, that that's the most meaningful change of the the three item sets. Mm-hmm. Um, now every wave, or the the ancient coin line no longer has any of the old regen effects. Um, it used to, if you're not a support main, it used to give you 25 base mana regen um, on ancient coin, 75 percent on nomads, and 75 percent on uh, talisman. Those are those are gone. And you don't get any health back for being around minions that die. Um, oh, wait, maybe you still do. No, it looks like, well, I, think you still uh, do. I don't see it changing here. So. You still do. Um, instead, now every wave, a coin, as they're calling it, will drop. One wave, it will be a coin that gives you gold. And the other wave will be a coin that gives you mana back. Um, I wasn't, I think it's a percentage of your missing mana. Um, and when I tested it out in the practice tool, I was just standing there idly, so it was only giving me 15 because I didn't have any missing mana. Yeah. Um, but it was good to know that if you're at full mana, it doesn't care. It's still going to give you a mana coin if it's that if that's going to be the wave. Um, and then it... Uh, 
the the ancient coin land now also has um two gold per ten as opposed to the the old one that didn't have any gold per ten on it and that's notable because the gold per ten on these items also contributes to the quest line so, so sooner or later you will end up completing it even if you do a really 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 bad job of collecting <laughs> the coins yes um Wait, so it's it's one coin per was that just static one coin per wave and it's yeah. it does it alternate? Yeah, it just alternates. And so it's really okay. funny if you get like three waves built up onto each other because you might suddenly get three coins, but it might be two mana and one uh coin. Yeah, one actual coin, and you're like, coin, Wow, coin. this is a fucking waste of my time. Yeah. Why was I here? Um It's so well, one of the things that's kind of weird that I didn't I don't know how much you were able to test because I know you're you're doing it by yourself. It says they enemy minions killed by your allies. Is that like does that include like turrets? Does that include yeah just yeah champions turrets or minions? minions all that type of stuff? You don't you're like oh, it's just yeah. so there's nothing. It's the same it's as just it enemy was. minions killed. I don't know why there's well, like it's, it's, by by your allies is a weird because weird way if of you say that. enemy minions killed, uh, you could read that to mean that you could also kill the minions and then get the gold, and that's mm-hmm. the big thing is you can't oh, kill. Oh, gotcha. Them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and okay. it's just like the bounty. Uh, I think it's bounty. Whatever the hell that the the passive is in the the cunning tree, where you know supports get gold for minions nearby dying, and they also get it for uh, you know hitting champions with with pointy things or fists or something. Sure. Um. Yeah, spell thieves didn't change a whole lot. Um, the the quest reward is that you get a you get bonus movement speed every time you proc tribute. Which is really, really nice. I think that's going to be like a really, really good one. Um, it also made they also made it so that the cooldown isn't as uh, the cooldown on tribute uh, isn't as bad if you accidentally kill a minion with uh, like a Sona Q, for example, since that one's really difficult to control. And you know, if you're if you're just outside range or you're only in range of one enemy champion, and everything you could really easily just take a minion and not have had any any real say over the matter um they decreased it from 12 seconds to eight seconds but now this will start to stack if you kill a bunch of minions so like brands out there could end up being really really punished if they're not being you know attentive to to the state of the wave uh i don't think most brand players are gonna care they tend to be gold hogs but uh (laughs) you know this this does affect a handful of champions in a possibly negative way um but overall most dedicated support players who are you know, who try to be well rounded in their pool are already pretty mindful of this, so it's it's going to end up being a, a net positive for them when they, uh, you know, hit waves with abilities for for whatever reason. Um, and then the relic shield line, it really didn't nothing about it changed except for the the addition of the quest. Uh, so so the ancient coin line definitely saw the most changes, but um, and then frostfang and that line, it got more AP. Uh, frostfang went from fifteen to twenty. Queen, well, Queen's claim went from fifty to sixty, and if correct me if I'm wrong, but none of these had like a gold increase either, right? They're, they still cost the same. Yeah, That's which a- surprised me because they said they didn't want to add damage power to these items because right. the mages were already going for damage, and then they added ability power anyway. Like a ten AP jump on Frost Queen's claim is a lot. Ten AP jump on Eye of the Watchers is a lot. Yeah, it goes from twenty five to thirty five on a Sightstone item. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, you're also like losing mana. Yeah, it's yeah. not like but it's you, just a. You're not getting a straight. But you're buff building redemption damage when you're. So. Yeah, most of the <laughs> champions that are getting this are I mean, also getting like three mana regen items or something along the way. Like they they don't give a shit about the mana regen on I or Frost Queen, but extra damage. I mean, that's especially that early killer. game. Yeah, yeah. that's it, it's interesting because I actually think looking at all of them now, I actually think Frost or the Frost Thing line is probably the worst out of the three in terms of quest. Like. Yeah, move. Oh no, speed. I think it's yeah. I think it's second best. I think I think the ancient coin line is a garbage quest. See, I think ancient coin's gonna matter way more for pro play where that extra point matters in your skills. Because that's a Who are you getting who are you getting ancient coin on? Uh that's a great question. Uh Rocket Rakan. Hmm. <laughs> I don't I don't know what he does with that. that so so that's the thing. Like this sounds real like an extra point sounds really good in theory. And when I was talking about this with Adam when we first read about all of it, he's like, I can think of a lot of champions who would love to have that extra skill point and everything. And I said, and how many of them would rather buy Frostfang right off the bat or uh Spell Thieves right off the bat? And he said, That's a really good point. Never mind. Nobody yeah. wants that but, item. No, you're right, because like outside of like Raka starting coin, I don't 
Not too many supports that really start it. Thresh sometimes goes coin. Um, but even then, that's eh, yeah. That's when they can't use relic shield. Like when you when you're like, <laughs> yeah, I don't when feel Thresh walks to the land of coin, I'm like, oh boy, this is all right. Having exciting. having tried to do that a, a decent amount of time and everything, it's not just on the support. There are plenty of AD sure. carries who do not acknowledge that uh, Thresh can't execute, so he'll be in the wind up to kill it, and then they will shoot it. Mm -hmm. because they have faster attack animations yeah. and so guilty it's an infuriating item to <laughs> to get when you're thresh but uh hmm. no i mean like so, it's it's there are there are definitely matchups where um the the janna lulu and that type of like nami that type of champion who you know a lot of times would give spell thieves a, a hard look right off the bat We'll say, you know what? I'm not going to be able to get in range to get meaningful uh, tribute procs. It makes more sense for me to just take the the ambient gold from Talisman so that I can, you know, still get items and contribute in a meaningful way later on. Um, you know, Blitzcrank for a lot of players is, is that uh, that specific matchup yeah. where you just are, like trying to use tribute puts you in such danger, dangerous range that you don't want to risk it. Um Soraka will probably go for this because not that she has mana issues and everything, but she also doesn't do anything. You know, <laughs> she hits W <laughs> and she sometimes hits Qs. A uh, question though: Does this ignore like level requirements? Like for whatever reason, even though it's unrealistic to ever happen, if I'm level five and I've got my quest done by some miracle, can I skill up to level six to get my ultimate at level five? No, or is it no, still I believe, level no. I believe yes. No, no, so no. It's you still can't. level that's, that? that's explicitly not but, allowed. Like you, you. I think. I think what it does is you can't. Are you, you like? Can't how do you know this? Are you speculating? Are you? No, it. It doesn't. No, it doesn't level you up. That's the thing. No, but it gives it you a gives skill you a, rank, which would. No, it doesn't. It gives you a skill point, and so it acts as though you have six skill points when you're at level five. So you can't. You can't put a fourth point into your Q because the level requirement for that is seven. Yeah, I would want to test that. Point I don't know that that's how that works. I'm pretty certain. I think yeah, I've read I was this. Asking, like it's it's because like it it's, it's, I don't think I don't think the the level five. In fact, I don't think the level five situation would ever come 11, up. 11, like just, low. but yeah, level eleven is is where it might happen. Yeah. Um, I do know that it takes like if you just go and stand in the lane, it will take you about eleven minutes. Um, if you have nomads, it'll take you about eleven minutes to get the gold to. To complete the quest and everything off like the drops um yeah who let yeah. me let me because if you if you don't pick up any drops i did the math on this it will take 54 minutes for you to get your quest done <laughs> and that is if you don't pick up any coins so uh relaya who was to. a uh, a writer for lol king um kind of did a did a, an overview of all the items and then weighed in with some perspective on it uh and he said that on average, it was around the 15 minute mark when sure. he was getting that that quest reward and everything, which should be like the level nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, I was thinking that the eight to twelve range. You know, if you're really, you know, you know, it, it could be much. It could be er like it's not going to be much earlier than level eleven because yeah. you don't have any agency of what's dropping the coins. Um, so, but, and that also assumes like you are in lane for every single wave that's going to drop a coin, mm -hmm. which is unrealistic. Um, I don't know. I hate the change for the talisman line, even yeah, with don't... that skill point and everything. I think, I, I think overall it's like, congratulations. You made me telegraph my position a lot more the, the, you know, the pickup range is generous, but you still have to leave a bush that you were trying to keep control over, uh, or zone control over or, um, you know, for for a skill point, which ultimately, like for a lot of the support champions out there, or that that would otherwise be getting this item, like that skill point's probably not going to end up being yeah. a big deal. Um, How long do those coins know. stay on the ground? Is it like same time as like Thresh Soul or Thresh Souls? I felt like lasted pretty long. Yeah, um, it's less than thirty seconds. That much I know because I did miss one coin when I had clicked the fast forward thirty seconds thing, and it was just outside my range. Gotcha. Uh, so you, they do go, they do disappear. You can miss them if you're really inattentive. But because it was moving so fast, like I didn't really pay attention to how long they lingered. Um, you know, they weren't difficult to pick up. But the pickup range felt a little bit more generous than Thresh's Souls. Mm -hmm. but reality is that you can still see them on the ground and so you can now start thinking about doing things because hey they're walking over there 
because the other the the other uh, one more I have one more thing on this because the other thing I'm thinking about now that I'm like looking at this is like the when you got coin most of the time you're playing in a very passive lane when you didn't want to walk up like Soraka or uh, Gianna. Now now I'm wondering like depending on the lane like you might just not get any coins because right. Like, this can force you into a weird position where you're getting zoned out of the thing that you were, because of the thing yeah. that you, you know, you chose to start with. Thinking that it was going to give you more money, it actually ends up hurting yeah. you. Because if I'm, like, Soraka Twitch against Caitlyn Karma, I'm never touching a coin. Ever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're... you're gonna yeah, this, this doesn't feel good. Oh. No, I, I hate the changes. The other thing I hate about them is that you, except for... The ancient coin line is interesting because you can complete the quest and then trade the item in for something else and you still keep the skill point. Huh. Um, the same is not true for the the spell thieves and relic shield lines. If you complete the ca- the quest and then you swap items, you don't keep those passives. And why would you? It makes a lot of sense. I was I was kind of optimistically hoping that you would get to keep that shield. Um, I thought yeah. that would be be really nice. Uh, but it's not surprising that you don't get to keep that. But the problem is that there are a lot of, um, not a lot of champions. There is an Alistar that I play where I like to start with the uh, Relic Shield because it is the better laning item. Mm-hmm. But once laning is nearing its end, and, and granted, you know, I, I usually, I, I delay it as long as possible, but uh, I ultimately end up switching over to Talisman because I like the Talisman active a whole lot more for Alistar than I do the um face of the mountain or eye of the whatever it is equinox yeah thank you eye of the equinox so, yeah i mean i love talisman active on alistar sean loves it when i get talisman active on alistar <laughs> um it just helps me do the things i want to and yes righteous glory is still in the game that is an option but it was really nice being able to just roll the support item into that move speed item that i was looking for right. that said yeah, the shield uh, is really good uh, this is something that I'm not sure if it's super important, uh, but one thing we haven't mentioned about the quest being completed is that uh, takedowns on enemy champions then also spawn coins. Oh. So, small like once the quest is completed, not not once you've leveled it to Nomad's Medallion, it's after you've finished completing the quest, it'll it'll do that. Yeah, so, so you get more money once you have that skill point and everything. And that's yeah, good. So that's that's good of, for, your, for yeah, you rolling good. for the rest of the game and everything, but you still had to suffer through having fucking coin for... <laughs> Yep. <laughs> the first the first um, 15 minutes of the game when you like that's the worst time to have coin. Uh the other other change that I don't think I don't think we mentioned yet uh there for the tribute line, the uh Frost Queen's okay. line, there is now a delay after a tribute charge is spent before the same spell can spend another. This means that abilities such as Morgana's W and Misfortune's E, uh her pool and their make it rain don't 100% guarantee three stacks Ooh. of damage slash gold if your opponent moves out of the spell area. I mean, that's I think is smart because yeah. you're you're you don't want to give this easy 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 gold well now there's more incentive than just you get gold if you were still playing support misfortune for some reason you really need to stop she's been bad for a long time and this is just an extra nail in that coffin <laughs> Let um, people i don't think dreams. this is i don't think this is that big of a deal on morgana the the instant really fast uh tribute procs from pool were really really nice but more often than not you weren't sitting on three pool stack uh, or I'm sorry, sorry, three tribute stacks to blow right away. You know, maybe right when you got back to laning, but more often than not, it was like you had one that that you were getting, um, and you weren't like, you know, you're leveling Q anyway because you mm-hmm. you want to deal all that upfront damage right off the bat. You know, it, I mean, they they she might see a slight downtick in her win rate as a result of this, but I, I would be pretty surprised because, yeah. like, it, that was just a perk of the ability, and it's not you know who cares ultimately but misfortune yeah is the wor- is the hard. lowest win support right now at 42.63 percent according to champion.gg but, and that's saying something because rakan uh, is bad rakan is the next worst at 45 12 and then it's lux galio vigar so you forgot about mouse i mean Harney. didn't uh, they're next didn't we kind of already didn't we kind of agree for the longest time that support misfortune is good in one matchup and usually if you are a good player it is, well it was it, is into good, and it turned into Zyra. two matchups yeah. because it was good against malzahar as well and oh, then people right. remember lulu was a champion and destroys both of those matchups anyway oh dumpsters <laughs> super hard yeah uh so 
Oh, hey, how how big is that shield that you get from from the relic so, shield line? Because you you it tested looks like this. It scales with it scales with level. That much I know. Um, I didn't exact. I don't know how much it scales with uh per level because I don't know what the base amount is. Um, at level nine, the shield was two hundred ninety health, which is substantial. Um, it takes a little bit while for it to charge up, but it's a situation. W- it's not like Malphite's shield where. You have to wait until it's off cooldown, and then you get all of the shield back. Um, while it's charging up, you basically just get increments of the shield uh, added to your health bar. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. yeah. And then Tribute Prox gave... I, I can't remember if it was scaling up or not. I remember 71 being a number, though. So, you know, it adds a decent amount of, of health to not your bad. bar. Yeah. Um, I'd imagine it's similar to, like, Malphite passive. No, it's not who, like Malphite passive. really pass. likes... Not, okay. It's not because Ooh. Malphite passive is an instant chunk of shield. Sure. Like you just get the shield once it comes off cooldown. Whereas this one, like you get the, you know, you get seventy one added to whatever shield you currently have. Oh. Okay, and then okay. and then it, it'll regenerate more and it just kind of keeps regenerating. It's more or less like health regen in that regard. Okay. Sure. Makes more sense. Um, what I was just trying to think of is. I haven't been playing support in a while now. Who would really like the move speed you'd get from those tribute procs? Like, I know, obviously, it, m- more move speed is never bad, but I'm trying to Karma think of who more would than be Karma. Like... Karma and Morgana are going to yeah. love this more than any more than any of the other champions. Karma, it will allow her to get much closer and tether without having to spend her shield on herself. Um, she'll be able to throw a shield on somebody else and then still keep the still keep a tether going in in theory there otherwise it just lets her reposition and position better which are both things that she wants to do morgana is the same situation you can go in and press r and then you do a much you have a much easier time sticking to the one target that you were uh really trying to get stunned as opposed to uh hoping that they were you know within near range of you or something like that granted a lot of morgana players end up uh getting zanyas and well as well so they press r and then they press you know a number button and go into stasis but those are the two that strike me i guess annie yeah, I was thinking Annie, but by the time you're already like in spell range, you're engaging. So yeah, um, fiddlesticks. Because if he ults mm-hmm. in, he gets the passive, mm-hmm. so he can stay on people. I guess. I mean, every single every single one of those mage supports, to a degree, just loves being able to reposition and get get to the spot they want to be in faster. Mm-hmm. Um, I can see a handful of players that are the like one trick types actually being thrown off a little bit. You know, the the type of people, but these are the people who know how long it takes to get from a to b so that they can they can cast their ability and then being able to do that faster will ultimately be a good thing for them but for like four games or something it's going to throw them off yeah you know velkaz and brand players i guess Mm -hmm. (laughs) but every Um, single one of them every single mage support that i can think of likes that even fucking janna or nami or something it's like yeah that's (laughs) being able to move faster is great yep yeah uh do we have any? I don't. I don't know if we want. We didn't really want to dive into anything else. I don't think. Like, unless you want to do how to pick a support. <laughs> no, I'd rather do that. Uh, save that yeah, for we like. Everybody. We've just done so many mid-season shows that I would rather like be able to to say, hey, episodes three, what is it? I'm sorry, episode four thirty four through four thirty eight or whatever it mm-hmm. ended up being. You know, are, these are the mid-season shows. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. Would you like? Obviously, I have strong feelings on them and everything. And the more I think about it, the more I think the Frost Queen's line or the the Spell Thieves line is the winner of the support quest. But the Relic Shield is like a really close second because all the champions that would be getting Relic Shield want that bonus shield anyway. But the Talisman line to me got really boned. Yeah, definitely. The The thing is, I don't think it got boned that badly because it wasn't getting picked anyways. And so, if anything, I know you're, you're going to see an uptick for a little bit because people are going to try it out. And if it goes back to where it was, it's not really... It didn't. It was playing with house money. It wasn't going to get anything. And that's not a pun on picking up a bunch of coins. Um, so, that's. I think that's kind of... I think it's cool that they're messing with it because Talisman, for the longest time, was like was like a locket. You had to have it on your team. Like, And this was a while back, mind you. This was like, I don't know, season five, maybe... Uh, maybe that was Righteous Glory's time to shine, but like there was so much move speed in the game that like when Sivir was really popular, you had to have that engage or disengage tool with getting a shit ton of move speed. If that comes back at any point, Talisman suddenly is is important. Right. But and now you have a bit a bit more incentive than before, where 
Talisman didn't do anything. Like, you got fucking nothing from it until you made it into ta- in, into Talisman itself. It was just, I guess I get healed up a little bit and some mana when when people are nearby. Like, it, it was so bad and so, like, such a passive item. And now you have something. It's not crazy, but it's it's enabling... I think that on some Pokey supports who aren't trying to... I don't know how to phrase this right. Who maybe not... Maybe won't get enough kill pressure from spell thieves but would get enough kill pressure or at least presence from they throw out so many skills that i benefit from all this mana i'm getting back from these coins maybe i i am i am trying to find the fringes <laughs> see, to that, fringes like, that, here that's trust me don't because i see a face well, is like no nope, trap nope. logic because in that situation if you are taking agent coin but trying to poke you're up against some type of uh, some type of engaged tank you're, you're either up against a poke lane in which you're always going to lose the trades because they have uh, the spell thieves line, so they're just going to be dealing more damage than you. Um, or you're up against tanks who aren't going to be poking back, uh, and your damage is going to be slow, so low and negligible that they're just going to heal it all back up through the relic shield crocs. I'm I'm looking for anything, man. Like, <laughs> I'm, trying I'm, try, I'm trying so to find hard. a situation where it where it works because I don't I don't like when something is just completely unplayable. Mm-hmm. But and it's, they're usually it's, like in any in any meta. There's going to be things that are not, that aren't playable. It's so. fine. Like the 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 active on talisman is still really good. Mm-hmm. It's still really really valuable. And like we you know Rakan got got brought up at the start of it and everything. He absolutely loves that item. It's really really good for him. Um, I was a big fan of taking a different item. And then swapping to Talisman on the champions where that was appealing to me because that would be useful to my team or useful to my kit. And now I'm kind of like weirdly penalized for doing that. I don't know. I, I might still do it on Rakan or something because I just don't care about that skill up and everything. And Relic Shield is awful on him. It feels terrible to use. And, you know, you know but he gets a little bit out of the ability power and the damage at least during the early early stages so that when you want to switch over to a different item that would be fine but Alistar I think I'm going to just stick with the shield at this point cuz that's too much to it's too good to pass up now yeah it just I, feels I like the other ones got better and talisman which was already struggling got worse mm-hmm. yep uh, i'm i I've I've been like frantically searching to see if I can get a uh, an actual breakdown from somebody on how the how that skill point works, and I just I don't have it, and it's so sad to me because I want I want to like I I don't like leaving something that we don't know the answer to like like completely even though we have our thoughts on what it probably we'll have well, a follow well, we up can... next week. I mean, this isn't. Yeah, <laughs> well, we will definitely know then because I like I can't believe they don't have it. Like, damn it, Sotir, you're you're in this thread that I'm looking at, and you are not <laughs> not helping. They, they provided how dare you not answer my question 15 days ago? little information about yeah. how all of this stuff worked. I was really disappointed yeah. that I couldn't find answers to a lot of these questions, and I had to um, solicit some people on Twitter. And then even then, it was a lot. A lot of it was just waiting until the patch hit, so that I could go into the practice uh, tool and test. Hmm. Yep. So I think that's gonna do it. I I I'm gonna stop looking at threads <laughs> and actually uh, come back to the come back to the episode for at least a couple seconds. Oh, um, I want to throw so, a quick one thing out there. There is currently a typo on Talisman of Ascension, where it reads <laughs> the Point Runner passive gives you two hundred percent bonus movement speed when you are around <laughs> towers. That's a typo. It's still just twenty percent. Uh, when I originally saw that change, I thought that was insane, and that Talisman was now the best item of the the. Uh, and when I found out that was a typo, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Makes sense. They really shouldn't have changed that. Um, and okay, now I think it's the worst. I, <laughs> I like th- th- that. Kind of reminds me of those Reddit threads where it's like, if you could add a zero to one number in the <laughs> game, and what would happen? Right. <laughs> like that's that's that kind of scenario where it's just like somebody's moving crazy fast <laughs> between turrets. <laughs> you'd never be able uh, to hit some of those supports and you would have to like live in just genuine terror of them suddenly being on top of you and now you're in the box or you're getting your entire team's getting flayed backward because you didn't even see where thresh mm-hmm. came from or, or uh-oh alistar's running around and hey he knocked or he, he pulverized you and now he is so far behind you that he is knocking you clear to the nexus 
Yeah. Oh, uh, so I did. I did find finally one thing, and it is if you hit level ten after using the elixir, you can't use the second point in your ultimate. Okay. Good to know. You cannot. So that that's the only thing that I found. Um, so that might make sense for level restrictions. That, that's um, good to know, and all like that just makes yeah. it worse, in my opinion. Oh, it makes it worse, hundred percent. You know, but getting, it would... getting that extra bonus right at level ten or something could it could be really uh, meaningful on Soraka. Support Amumu, <laughs> but anyone who likes ultimates um yeah all right so guys that'll do it for us i think that will be the end of our mid-season update uh now thankfully we will have some time hopefully over the weekend to chew on these changes because they're live now we can at least play around and see what's going on with all these new champions all these all these new changes that we've been talking about for four straight oh episodes <laughs> uh, yeah we, good, we've had goodness. a lot of so, really good discussions along the way so i'm glad we did it this way but i am so tired of talking about upcoming patch changes and everything we just it's been so long since we got to talk about anything else that i'm really looking forward to a few episodes where that's uh not the case yep yeah so so thankfully uh we haven't announced this yet we will be taking a break until the world patch <laughs> uh we will not be having episodes till that is totally a joke we will be here uh every <laughs> we might have a couple more uh pat uh episodes where it's playing some games i wouldn't be surprised considering now we're going to have not a lot of patch notes to talk Hopefully. about. Hopefully. And kind of, honestly, gameplay is maybe a little bit more valuable in terms of helping people out with getting through this uh, these new changes. So uh, be on the lookout for that, guys. Uh, but that will do it for episode 438 of the Trinity Force podcast. Uh, thanks for joining Later, us. everyone. Doodles. Thanks for listening to our product and being a member of the Trinity Force Network community. If you have a moment, please head over to iTunes and give your favorite show a comment and a rating. If you're so inclined, you can check out all of the other great shows in the network. We've got a wide variety of content from League of Legends to general gaming and role-playing podcasts. If you'd like to follow us on social media, we can be found at Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit under T-Force Network. We've also got a Patreon under that name where you can support your favorite shows with a small donation each month. Thanks again for listening, and we hope you continue to enjoy all of our podcasts, videos, and the community that we provided.